The Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship is heading towards the sharp end of the season, but there's little sign of any one driver taking absolute charge in the race for the title. Rounds 22, 23 and 24 came at Rockingham, with strong crowds taking in a view of the whole circuit. Come qualifying though, the spectators and 31 cars were greeted by thunder and lightning, with all drivers surely keen to clock a benchmark lap in the early stages before conditions worsened. Motorbase performances Matt Jackson and the Silver Line Subaru BMR racing duo of Jason Plato and Colin Turkington slotted in behind Gordon Sheddon's opening benchmark. Matt Neal, Rob Collard and Plato were among those to endure off-track excursions during the running, proving that the conditions were a handful for even the most experienced of BTCC drivers. A 10-minute delay allowed for the downpour to ease and for officials to assess the track conditions, which were deemed drivable once more, with 14 minutes still on the clock. As grip levels improved with every tour, Sheddon secured pole by recording a further improvement in the closing moments. A disastrous Saturday, though, left team JCT 600 with guard X-man championship leader Sam Tordoff, 28th, directly behind WSR stablemates Rob Collard and Jack Goff, who also had sessions to forget. Off the line in race one, poleman Shedden in the Holford's Uasa Racing Civic Type R made a decent getaway, but was immediately forced into fending off the attentions from fellow front row starter Matt Jackson. The lead Subarus, Jason Plato and Colin Turkington, swamped Josh Cook's MG, while Jackson drew alongside Shedden through the banking and down into Dean. After a brief battle for the lead, Jackson eventually fell back into the clutches of the charging Subarus. A number of minor incidents on the opening lap led to a short safety car period, but reigning champion Shedden produced a stellar restart before gradually pulling away from the chasing pack. After falling off the pace of the leader, Jackson's Ford Focus became the widest car on the grid for the second successive race, after the motor-based performance driver backed up his Knock Hill race win with another masterclass here. Although this battle was for second, Jackson again produced an impressive defensive drive to keep Silverline Subaru BMR racing duo Plato and Turkington at bay. The MGs of Josh Cook and Ash Sutton recovered from sluggish starts to follow the Subarus home. Andrew Jordan made it an independence 1-2 for motor base performance after he surged from 14th on the grid to finish 7th after a number of eye-catching moves. Championship leader Sam Tordoff produced arguably the most spirited drive, coming from 28th to 10th. When the number 52 Honda eventually crossed the line, having led lights to flag, Shedden had secured the perfect pole position, fastest lap and race win treble, his third win of the 2016 campaign. The Scot had to handle maximum ballast for race two and the unfavourable hard tyre, and it was deja vu as Jackson drew alongside as the field roared around Rockingham's bank turn one. A nudge from Cook's MG6 compromised Jackson, while Plato's Subaru lurched deep into turn two and a chain reaction followed. The MG RCIB insurance racing man spearing into the unfortunate Jack Goff. After Tordoff's dogged race one fight back following that disastrous Saturday showing, he picked his way through the melee and into P5 from 10th on the grid, making light work of Sutton's MG for fourth by the time the pack rounded the banking on lap two. Motorbase pair Jackson and Jordan were harrying the heavy lead Honda out front, and the former made his move stick into Dean, and the latter followed a lap later. Shedden was now being shuffled down the order. Tordoff slipped through shortly after Jordan, with Sutton and Collard following the leaders, moving by the Civic Type R into Turn 2 as Aidan Moffat and Adam Morgan also capitalised. The lead trio had made a bit of a break for it, with Jackson still enjoying a few car lengths of breathing space to Jordan, while the Pertec Ford had a racy-looking Tordoff in its rear-view mirror to deal with. The rear-wheel drive BMW's superior traction out of the slow stuff paid dividends as the Yorkshireman outdragged the Midlander on the run down to the S's on lap seven. Once passed, Tordoff was right with Jackson, and there was little even he, master of the defence, could do as the 125i M Sport leapt past into the S's on lap nine, leaving the Fords to squabble. Jordan got the better of his teammate before Rob Collard made it through, demoting Jackson to fourth and promoting the WSR man to the podium. It didn't take long for Tordoff to create a cushion out front. And it was done and dusted with a couple of tours remaining. He took the chequered flag for his second victory this season. An incredible drive.
Reverse grid pole sitter Aaron Smith had a mighty battle on his hands to keep his BKR Volkswagen CC at the front of the field with Matt Neal and an in form Matt Jackson right in tow down to the hairpin after the latter's typically swift start in race three. Smith's getaway was as good as he could have hoped, drawing out breathing space to the Honda behind, though a safety car instantly put pay to that, with Jack Goff's damaged BMW stranded after contact from Mark Howard's Volkswagen. Smith was the most alert at the first restart, restoring the gap he'd built up prior to the safety car's intervention. Behind, Shetton and Collard made their way beyond Jordan, who was wielding the harder Dunlop Sport Max tyre for race three, as the Honda and BMW moved into fourth and fifth, chasing the MG of Ash Sutton, himself enjoying something of a resurgence over the Rockingham weekend. The champion was on the move again on the next lap. A good run out of the S's left Shedden well placed to make a move on Sutton down into Dean. The combination of the success ballast being removed from his Honda Civic Type R and the softer compound Dunlop rubber making for a different animal than was on show in the previous race. Further making that point, race two's winner and championship leader Sam Tordoff was struggling as he now had the harder rubber to contend with as Ollie Jackson made his way by for P11 on that five with Jason Plato following. Rob Collard also looked to be a contender, but he couldn't keep pace with Shedden's charge, with the Honda man following up his move on Ash Sutton by finding a way beyond Jackson at Tarzan. As in race two, the mixture of rubber made for a gaggle of cars all fighting over the same piece of tarmac. Sutton, Morgan, Jordan, Turkington, Moffat, Newsham and Ollie Jackson all right at it. It was frenetic stuff, and with so many competing for a slither of asphalt contact, was always a possibility. Newsham and Sutton, the two that came to blows, prompting a safety car. As Smith's lead was pulled from underneath him for the second time in the race, he now had Gordon Shedden on his bumper. Neil, running the less ideal of the two tyre compounds, had moved aside to give his teammate a clear run at the Irishman for the lead. Once again, it was the Volkswagen that was best off the mark as the safety car peeled into the pits. Turkington was busy scything his Subaru through the order from 16th on the grid. And when the dust settled during a third and final safety car period due to Warren Scott's stranded Subaru, the Ulsterman found himself in a podium position. The third, and what would be the final restart, saw Smith get the jump again as the fledgling BKR outfit began to dare to believe it may have become a BTCC race winner. When you've two double champions immediately behind you, then three laps seem like an eternity. Some great defensive driving from Smith and Turkington's close attentions meant Shedden couldn't find a way through, leaving the BKR man to take the win ahead of the Honda, closely followed by the Subaru, to the delight of Smith's team down in the pit lane. The trio crossed the line separated by just half a second, with Neil a little further back in fourth. Would you expect anything else in the BTCC? Championship leader and Rockingham Race 2 winner Tordoff managed only P16, leaving his gap at the top of the Drivers' Championship trimmed to just five points, ahead of Holford Tuasa Racing's Matt Neal, with another consistent haul of points over the three rounds in Northamptonshire. With just Silverstone and Brands Hatch to come this season, it's anybody's guess as to who will be in contention come the finale. 13 drivers are still in mathematical contention and the battles rage on in the teams and manufacturers running too. Louise Goodman caught up with Matt Neal following another metronomic weekend from the BTCC legend, which saw him further close the gap at the top of the driver's standings. Well, Matt, it's been a lively weekend here at Rockingham, hasn't it? It certainly has. Uh, Rockingham always produces some pretty fierce racing and it's, uh, I don't think it's disappointed this weekend. So, just two rounds of the championship to run now. Next one is, is Silverstone. How do you see things shaping up there? Because we are getting to the sharp end of the series, aren't we? Well, Silverstone, we're definitely well into the business end of the, of the end of the year and the pressure's mounting. Um, somehow we've managed to close the gap on, on the BMWs uh, at Rockingham. Uh, and we, we, we aim to keep that pressure up at Silverstone, definitely. As you say, just five points in it, the pressure really on. Who are going to be the, the main contenders um, at, at Silverstone? It's wide open, you know, you can easily be shuffled out, not just the top 10, but the 15 or 20. So you've really got to be on the top of the game sharp and um, make sure you've got your car working well underneath. You've got the team right behind you. And um, if we can keep the pressure on Sam, maybe you'll crumble. It's always a pretty special event, isn't it? You know, the home of the British Grand Prix, the home of the British Racing Drivers Club. There's so much prestige and history associated with the circuit. 
Silverstein is is the home of British motorsport, you know, and whether it be from Formula One to touring cars to to uh, you know all sorts of racing. So it, it's a special place to be there, home of the BRDC, as you say. So um, we always cherish going back there, and it's a, it's a great event. We just use the national circuit, but that just means we come around more often, the fans see more action, and we get stuck into each other more often. So. Uh, I think Gail likes that, the TV likes that, and everybody likes that. And one of the races that the fans and the sponsors always want to come along to as well. I mean, it's a really lovely paddock, isn't it? It's always a big grid, big crowd. Uh, it's pretty hellish to get in and out of, so you've got to get there early. But the entertainment's definitely good when you get there. And the atmosphere? Atmosphere is electric. You go around the stadium area, around, um, around the complex, around Brooklyn and Luffield, you can hear the U's and R's of the crowd, so it's, that's pretty special. See you there. Thanks.